any kind of business process if you want to perform any transaction if you want to know profitability so first of all you should have a some type of masters now masters like your material masters vendor master and customer master now if you have a master data then after that what you can do you perform some transactions on this master data now what are these transactions like your purchase order is your transaction your PR purchase execution is your transaction, your sales order is a transaction. Fine. Now you have a master data. On basis of masters, you perform few transactions. Now you have a complete detail about your business. Now on basis of these two, we can get so many different kind of reports like what is your what was my purchase price variance? What was the difference between my last purchase price? What is my current inventory aging? The vendor classification a class vendor b class vendor c class vendor in a similar way if we talk about the inventory part specifically then different inventory analysis like abc analysis xyz analysis we can have a listing of our slow moving item fast moving out item so basically if you have these details so you can get your reports very easily like i said Initially, first thing we need a master data. So here we'll see that what are the masters we required for our procurement process. This is an example of a one purchase order. Suppose if you want to purchase a material, first thing what do you need initially? First of all, you need material detail which you want to procure. Then you need a source. Source here your source is a vendor master. So initially we need a material master and vendor master now on basis of this material master and vendor master we can generate some kind of purchase info record which will help us during our transaction data like if you want to know the previous purchase price of a material then you can get this detail by using purchase info record this is one material master view see material master will have us so many different views it again depends on module to module. Few views are important for your purchasing, while others are important for sales and distribution in a similar way, quality management and production planning. SAP is one integrated software. So whenever we talk about a module like MM, so there will be an integration between other modules, MM and FI, MM and SD, this way. So initially in our material master, we enter a detail which is required for our procurement first second if you want to monitor a quality of your product then we'll enter a detail related to quality so here your mm and qm quality management comes in picture the integration comes in picture in a similar way we'll enter our financial details so the fi will comes in picture so here it's the screen the first part this is a material master for one flat screen TV makes Sony. Fine. Now, simply I'll enter a short description of a product, base unit of measurement, a product unit in which this metal will be handled, and metal grouping. Now, in SAP, we have a very beautiful function of to get the reports. Suppose if you want to know the uh, some some report about your product. Okay, so one way is that you enter your material numbers individually. Okay, and other way is that you simply enter one single key that is your material group. So basically material group is a grouping of a similar kind of product. Now this is a purchasing view. As far as MM is concerned, purchasing view is very important. So in a purchasing view, this is our purchasing group. As I said earlier also, purchase group is a person responsible for this procurement. Or we can say it is a buyer code. Okay. Now, apart from this, we have other functions like plant specific material status. What happened in industries? Suppose the industry is running since a long time. So they have a very large database for their material. But there are few materials which are considered as active material rest all materials are inactive material so in that case we can block materials 
for procurement for inventory management for quotation and all these function so this purchase plant specific material status is about blocking of material then comes your purchase value key see if i talk about the role of buyer what is the role of buyer so role of buyer is to get first is to get material right time then correct price and required quantity this is the three primary objective of a buyer now to achieve this objective there are few tools which he can use suppose if i talk about delivery part so this purchase value key this one help him in smooth delivery how suppose you raised one purchase order to a vendor now buyer will have to perform some kind of duties like delivery follow up so that delivery follow up can be automated by using this purchase value key what we can do we can send a, some kind of expeditors or reminder to our vendor suppose i'll say that my first level of reminder will go 10 days prior to delivery date it means if my delivery date is on 10th then on first system will automatically generate one email alert to my vendor by saying that your material is delivery date is about to reach be prepared for dispatch in a similar way suppose if vendor missed that delivery then a second level of reminder can be triggered automatically which will have a certain detail about the penalty clause and all that in in this way we can use this reminder basically it will help buyer to reduce his workload in comes your accounting see uh, any type of material what we create in sap see the uh, a business has a one prime objective the business prime objective is to know or generate the profit okay so to know our profitability we have to use some kind of accounting practices so here we have a one valuation class see this valuation class is a one key which is which act as a bridge between your mm and fi whatever you are procuring in mm for those item cost will be booked in fi also the books of account so this is achieved by using this valuation class if we talk about the material types see uh, when we want to purchase the material so we can divide material on basis of their nature like raw material packaging semi finish finish spare and consumable so let us understand that what is need of this material type now i'll just uh, tell you the example between raw material and semi finish why it is called raw material because we will only procure from outside market that's why it is called as raw material or this product will be consumed for my production process while if i say semi finished material so the nature of semi finished material is that i can procure from outside market as well as i can produce in house also it means in case of a raw material there will be only external procurement while in case of a semi finished material i'll have both the functions external procurement as well as internal production so if i talk about the production so i need a certain setup related to production that's why there are here is different material type secondly suppose you want some kind of number assignment suppose you want that your raw material should start from 10 while packaging should start from 20 semi finished 30 in this way so we can fix up a different number ranges for our different material type okay apart from that there are some kind of enhancements suppose uh, purchase value key should be used as a mandatory field for raw material but it shouldn't be considered as a mandatory field for semi finished material so these type of validations and announcement can also be achieved by using different material types so first was material second a vendor master 
ओके सो वेंडर इज सिंपली अ मास्टर और अ पर्टिकुलर सप्लायर फ्रॉम विच वी वॉन्ट टू गेट मटीरियल और वी वॉन्ट परचेज दिस मटीरियल सो इन वेंडर मास्टर वी सिंपली एंटर द कम्युनिकेशन डिटेल देर एड्रेस बैंक डिटेल कंट्रोल डिटेल अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट देर आर सम ट्रांजेक्शन रिलेटेड डिटेल्स लाइक पेमेंट ट्रांजेक्शन वेन एवर यू डिस्कस और निगोशिएट विथ वेंडर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल टॉक अबाउट प्राइजिंग देन विल टॉक अबाउट डिलीवरी ऑफ मटीरियल and finally we'll talk about the payment terms like vendor will ask me that i want payment 30 days after of delivery date okay this is a one payment term example in a similar way we can have a so many payment term in sap there are some standard payment terms which are available but if you want to create your own payment term as per need of your business then we can create our payment terms also now as i said that in case of a material we can block certain material then that thing applicable to vendor also suppose you have a large base of vendor okay and if you have a large base of vendor then it is very difficult to manage all this vendor so what we can do we can set up one benchmark let's say i'll have only 400 vendor active at a time okay rest all will be in blocked condition it means i can block and unblock vendor as per my need so here this is about the vendor master record initially general data then comes purchasing organization related data then comes purchasing and accounting data this is one screen about vendor master as i said this screen will have only communication detail like name of the company search term address postal code country and all that i mean a detail on the where you want to send some kind of email alert or some kind of automatic sms then this is the one screen which is telling about the uh, purchasing data okay so first of all here first thing is order currency order currency is a currency in which this vendor is going to deal with us secondly come terms of payment here i have mentioned c30 c30 simply means 30 days after delivery but suppose if i enter any payment term in my vendor master then at the time of purchase or the creation this vendor master will be copied in my purchase order so naturally this payment term will also get copied now will have a option that we can follow this payment term or we can enter our new payment term at purchase order level also it means this will this will be considered as a one benchmark for vendor payment but you can change it at the time of purchase order creation the next master comes is your source list simply a source list is a relationship between your vendor and material on basis of this source list we can control procurement of our material how suppose uh, your company wants to purchase some kind of air condition okay and as per their uh, previous understanding they figure out that uh, let's say the ge make air conditions are very good okay but they have other suppliers also so what they can do here they can maintain a source list in this way for this item for this plant during this validity period you can purchase from this vendor only if you want to purchase from any other vendor then system will simply give you a error message that purchasing is not allowed it or source is not defined what we are doing here we are putting a restriction on our buyer or we are making our system foolproof this source list is also used for automatic purchase or the creation because in sap if we have suppose for what we need for automation for automation we need a certain prerequisites if your prerequisites are matching then we can automate any process so for purchase or the creation your prerequisite is what material you want to purchase then from which vendor you want to purchase and what price you want then so here by using this source list will have a vendor and behind it will have one purchase info record in purchase info record will have a price 
बेसिकली दिस सोर्स लिस्ट इज यूज फॉर रेट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट प्रोक्यूरमेंट और शेड्यूलिंग एग्रीमेंट्स 